So it's my privilege to introduce your honoree tonight, the Governor of the State of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. First to Congressman Peter King. Isn't he great? Let's give him a round of applause. The Congressman, as he said, we've, we've worked together for many, many years. I worked with him when I was down in Washington during the Clinton days, uh, but then I've had the good fortune to work with him as governor. And uh, what the Congressman was talking about with uh, Hurricane Sandy and the way we came together is exactly right. Uh, we had a terrible devastation here in the state, but we were very successful in Washington with getting a supplemental appropriation, $32 billion, uh, and we fought very hard for it. But Congressman King had a more difficult job than anyone else. Uh, we had to convince President Obama and the Democrats. He had to convince the Republicans. <laughs> that is magnitudes of difference uh, than what we had to do. And uh, today, you very seldom see political courage. And it takes courage to stand up and fight your party. It takes courage to go into your party's leader and demand for your district, for your state, what is the right thing. Peter King fought for New York like a Trojan. And he fought his own leadership, and he fought his own party that was going to disrespect his district in the state of New York because it was the right thing. And I don't care what political party you're in. If you're a person of courage and principle, and you fight for your people, and you honor your vows, you're my kind of politician, and that's Pete King. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> to the real honorees tonight, Mark Barden and Neil Heslin, let's give them a round of applause for what they've done, the Sandy Hook families. To Detective Steve McDonald, the congressman recognized him, but let's give him another round of applause, our hero. To Barbara Holt, Ellen Frudenheim, Katina Johnson, who are going to receive the Steve McDonald Award. Congratulations to you. And to Leah Gunn Barrett for all her great work. Let's give her a round of applause. The, you know, on this issue, uh, it's so simple, it's, it's, it's disturbing. Uh, our founding fathers put together this great intricate system, this delicately balanced system. They weren't experts in government. They weren't studied in the issues that they were going to face. But they were people of common sense, and that was their grounding. Thomas Jefferson used to talk about how common sense is the basis of all authority, all laws, and all construction of those laws is common sense. And that's what they really brought. Somewhere along the way, we've lost common sense and we've substituted its enemy, which is extremism and fanaticism and intolerance. And that's what's been gover governing all too often now in Washington. And that's what's been frustrating this issue for years. Because on this issue, you need common sense. Yes. We've construed the Second Amendment to say that an individual has a right to a gun. And you can hunt. I'm a gun owner. You can hunt. You can shoot. You can target shoot. You can have a gun just because you like a gun. That's the law. That's the way we've interpreted the Constitution. But common sense says your right doesn't extinguish my right. And your right to have a gun doesn't mean that I don't have the right to be safe. That is common sense. <laughs> And that's what the New York SAFE Act said. Criminals shouldn't have guns. So we need a database that can tell us who are the criminals, and then we have to check before we sell a gun. Mentally ill people shouldn't have guns. So we need a database, and we need to be able to check before a person buys a gun. We have to close the gun show loophole, because if we have the database to make the checks, then we have to sell the guns in a venue where they actually use the database. This is common sense. Ban assault weapons, why? Because they're so dangerous, God forbid they wind up in the wrong hands, they can do a lot of damage, and that's common sense. 
ban high capacity magazines. Why? Because if a person has a gun and they're hurting other people, the only opportunity law enforcement has to step in is when the person is changing a magazine, which can be literally a, a matter of seconds. But that's the only chance that the law enforcement has to step in on them. And if you want to help that police officer, if the police officer is your father, your brother, your friend, your sister, you want to make sure the law enforcement has at least those few seconds to try to save someone's life. And that's what large capacity magazines are all about. It is all, all common sense. And it's common sense that we've lost somewhere along the way. Now, the extremists will say, well, government doesn't have a right to regulate guns. Or they'll say the slippery slope argument. Once you start registering, you'll take away all guns. Or government wants a registry so they can go and seize the guns and they want to know where the guns are. This is a paranoia. That's what this is. 1934, FDR passed the law, outlawed machine guns. Why? Because they were too dangerous for society. Because society said your right to have that gun extinguishes my right to be safe and my right to be safe needs to be protected also. 1911, this state started a registry for handguns. 1911, 100, over 100 years ago. In those 100 years, did the state ever take out the registry and say, we're going to go seize the handguns? Now we know where these people live? It's not real. It is not a real fear. It's not a real uh, uh, burden on society. Critics will say we passed the gun bill in Albany too fast. They say the New York Safe Act was passed too quickly, 30 days after Sandy Hook. I say it's taken us way too long to pass that gun bill. I say too many people have died waiting for this nation and this state to come to its senses. I just wish we had passed it much, much sooner. And we could have, and we should have. Congressman talked about the Smith, Smith and Wesson Agreement in the year 2000, last year of the Clinton administration. There were a number of lawsuits against gun manufacturers. Some states, this state, California, public housing authorities, against the gun manufacturers. And President Clinton, I was the HUD secretary, said, no, let's step in and see if we can settle the lawsuits and get a, a national code of conduct about guns. And I was working on it with the Treasury Secretary. We negotiated with the manufacturer a code of conduct that did everything the SAFE Act did that we just passed, plus had something called smart gun technology that they could make a gun where the trigger read the fingerprint of the authorized user. And in a number of years, they could have had that gun where the, the trigger would have read the fingerprint. They agreed to something called ballistic fingerprinting, which is basically a picture of every casing so you could trace it back to the gun. That's what Smith and Wesson signed, that code of conduct. Largest handgun manufacturer in the United States at the time, Smith & Wesson, signed that code of conduct. The other manufacturers were ready to sign. The NRA boycotts Smith & Wesson. Why? Because they signed the code of conduct. Now, here's a manufacturer that says, we can do this and still be in business and still sell guns. It'll just be safer. We won't hurt as many people. We won't kill as many people. NRA boycotts Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson turns around, fires the president who signed the agreement. It becomes a political issue in the year 2000. The uh, person who winds up winning for president of the United States, or becomes president, doesn't actually win, but that's a different story. <laughs> He proposes in the campaign that he will immunize gun manufacturers from civil suit if he wins. The only industry that gets immunized was, by his promise, gun manufacturers. That stopped the conversation cold. 
Nobody else signed the contract. President Bush becomes president. We move on from the year 2000. From 2000 till today, 300,000 people died from gun violence. And it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be. And I can't tell you how many nights I said to myself, if we had only gotten it done a little faster, literally a few months would have made all the difference because we wouldn't have been in the middle of that political season. So no, we didn't pass it too fast. We passed it too slow. We should have done it in 1960, and 1970, and 1980, and we should have done it in 2000, and we should have done it before Aurora, Colorado, and we should have done it before Gabby Giffords, and we should have done it before Binghamton, and we should have done it before all these needless situations. Nevada today, again, where too many people lost their lives. It's common sense. But Benjamin Franklin also said, common sense is not that common. Hopefully, with your help, we'll elect more officials with common sense, like Pete King, like the officials who are in this room, and we'll change the law in Washington, finally, make, to make this nation a safer nation, and to make sure the people who did die did not die in vain. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.